Hello everybody and welcome back to Stellaris. Um, today I think we are going to go ahead and declare war on the Sandoran Authority. Now if you recall in the last episode, I changed our um, government policy uh, war philosophy to, a, to liberation wars. Um, like I said, I don't think role playing our empire, we are conquerors, but I do think we are very concerned about three hostile neighbors. Um, so we've been forced to uh, get good relationships with this empire right here um, in hopes of um, avoiding further um, further aggression from our neighbors. But I think we're about to go ahead and declare war on this empire to force a new government onto them. Um, and this new government will hopefully be more amenable to us um, and we can sign some non-aggression pacts and whatnot with our new neighbors um, if we win this war. So we have our fleet coming down, and our fleet is currently 10k plus 6k, that's 16k. That's a pretty powerful fleet, um, so I have high hopes for winning the war. Our army is actually back in Fevnor, and I think um, we should go into this army builder. Let's see. Our army currently has size 8. I think we could boost it up to 12, and in the army builder, we'll boost it up to 12 by building 1, 2, 3, Okay, we can only build three Titanic Beasts. That's fine. And then we'll f we'll finish it off with um, with an Assault Army. Um, we can either choose New Bull or Valdar. Um, we're going to use Valdar. Alright, so we're going to let this uh, queue finish up and then we're going to move these people down south as well. Once our military gets down south into the Waltham system, um, Looks like this uh, space station is all ready to go. Once we get this uh, fleet down into the Waltham system, we can start moving in and we can declare that war. Um, we are currently at war with MSI still, but again, I think this is more of a nominal nominal war. It's not really um, a de facto war because they're so far away in the galaxy that they have nothing to do with. And actually, this is a good thing. Um, I realized in the uh, last couple episodes that we recorded, um, I don't think the debt collectors will come while we're at war. So as long as we're at war, I don't think we have to worry about the debt collectors showing up, which is good for us. So we'll let this war drag on for as long as it wants to. Um, that's good for us. Um, before we unpause the game, let's go ahead and let's check all of our planets. Um, for example, we have zero jobs on our capital world. Um, we could upgrade... I think... We have planets dedicated to science, so I think we'll focus on our world on administration of our empire. So we'll probably want to upgrade some of these to increase our um, unity generation. So right now we're produce. This will basically double the amount of unity that we produce, but it's going to have an upkeep of rare crystals. How are we doing on rare crystal production? Plus five. Okay. Um, that's okay for now, but I'd actually rather just build a city district and build another administrative offices. I don't like upgrading the buildings until we absolutely have to, because um, those um, those rare resources really do really do cost a lot. Um, we have a new factory world that we colonized in the last time, old time, which is right here in the Jotham system. Um, Looks like we're in need of some more housing, so I'm gonna go ahead and build a city district. That'll give us an extra building slot as well. Uh, how is New Favare doing? This is gonna be a tech world for us. We have three jobs, six available housing. We're good there. Our agri world, we have two available jobs. We might as well keep on top of the food before it becomes a problem, build another agricultural district. Corium, our industrial world. Okay. Um, We can use some more industrial districts, seeing that we have one housing and no jobs. Droy Tendir, um, 64 energy. Oh, was this meant to be an energy? Was this meant to be in uh, a generator world? It's currently listed as one, but I don't think we necessarily intend for this to be a generator world. Um, let's auto designate this as, hmm. Well, let's see, we have a factory world. 
that we have in the industrial world. I think we need another... I think we need another factory world. Yeah. Size 22 factory world. Okay, so we're going to designate this as a factory world. And eventually I'm going to transition Corim into being a forge world. Um, but we need to get a huge surplus of consumer goods to do that. So, as a factory world, we're going to build one, two more industrial districts. Um, Alright, so we should be good to go. Let's go ahead and let's unpause the game. Let's get this fleet down here and let's declare war. Um, are we missing a commander? It looks like we are, right? Because one of our commanders was elected to be the commissary general. Um, so, is there a reason why we can't recruit another leader? Oh no, we can. It's grayed out, um, because we can't add traits to the leaders until we hi actually hire them. Alright, let's see who our possible commanders could be. Um, army damage, kind of boring. Governor effects, kind of boring. Locker cleared. Ship weapons range, or emergency FDL damage risk, and combat disengagement chance. I say we increase our ship's weapons range. Um, 31, militarist, yes. Okay, so this person is going to add our recovered asset. And we can give them an increase in ship's weapons range. Or ship hull points. We can give them engineer. Construction complete. Engineer is pretty good. Uh, but let's let's increase their weapons range, um, especially for this because this is kind of functioning as a carrier for us right now. So that weapons range is going to be really good for us because they're going to be the first of the fleet to engage. Death of a great leader. Our great scientist Gari Baeran has passed away at the age of 93. All right. We're going to plan a grand parade. All right. Monthly unity plus 5%. Ship build speed plus 15%. A worthy send off. All right. So hopefully while we're fighting this war, we don't get declared war on by the coalition or the order. Um, that would be really unfortunate. Okay, we can clear blockers on our agri world, and I think we will. We might as well get get a head start on these. Okay, I think we're ready to go. We're going to declare war. I don't think we are into conquering or subjugation, but we will impose our ideology. No, they have a defensive pact with the coalition and the order. Okay, I should have looked into this first. That is very concerning. If I go to war with one, I have to go to war with all three. Okay, so it looks like they've all bonded in their mutual dislike of the Favarian Republic, which is not great for us. I don't think we're ready to fight a war on three fronts. I really don't think we are. Um, I think the only way we can spin this is if I can invite... Nope. Add or remove the proposed attackers. Hmm. I thought maybe we could invite the neighbors from the Alliance of Hardshell Harbor, but I don't think that's gonna happen. I think we have to hold off on war as much as we wanted to do it. Um, we're not ready to fight war on three fronts, um, especially because those three fronts are actually very far away from each other. We just don't have a big enough um, fleet. We can maybe take on one empire at a time, maybe two at a push, but three? I don't think so. Okay, well, um, in that case, let's go see, um, let's go back to Huawei. Maybe we can, uh, we can upgrade our fleet a little bit, and let's go see if we can take on Shard. Um, I keep seeing the number 50k thrown around, but that seems a little excessive. We're going to see what, what damage we can do with 16. Might be a mistake. Because I think we're 
currently researching cruisers? Yeah. Okay, once we research cruisers, we're gonna add some cruisers into our fleet. That'll let us take away all of those frigates, which I really don't like. Oh, look, we can colonize another world and um, turn it into a Gaia world. We are receiving a transmission from the Ethereum state. They appear to have successfully translated our language. Diplomatic channels are now open and all hostilities between us have ceased for the moment. All right. They are egalitarian and militarist, just like us. Do not interfere with our endeavors. Um, where are these folks? The Ethereum state. Oh, looks like they've been, um, they've been beaten back significantly by the Galactic Viturian Coalition. Um, okay. Now, do we have a hyper relay? Okay, we're, we're in the process of building our last hyper relay between here and Huawei. I wish there was a little signifier on the map that showed us where we had a hyper relays. Because we have one here. We have one here. We have one here. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and let's get a colony ship queued up. Okay. We're going to make it a Valdar colony ship. And we're gonna move into a size 20 world, a size 20 world. Construction complete. Um, both of them would be fine. I think we're gonna move into the Gruner system because it's not on our border, so we don't have to worry about defending it. Um, so we're gonna move to this tomb world, we're gonna colonize it, and then we're going to activate our relic, which gives us the new bull life seeding decision to take on this planet. Fantastic. Blocker cleared. Okay, we can upgrade the planetary administration building on our generator world. That's great. Looks like we can build another generator district as well. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. The Galactic Viturian Coalition has declared us their rival. Wow. Well, that's not great. So we have our one ally is the Alliance of Hardshell Harbor. Um, and they're an ally out of necessity um, for us because we really we really just need one, one friendly person. I think it might be worth forming a uh, Alliance or a defensive pact or something. We can now piece together what became of the Ilani's attempt at immortality. It appears that far from bringing them everlasting life, they created a terrible menace. A swarm of microorganisms capable of multiplying rapidly and almost instantly devouring any organic matter. It must have happened to our team's lost member. The resulting cataclysm wiped out much of the population. Its survivors splintered into two groups. One, unwilling to give up Waltham four, looked at the depths, recreating their civilization in airtight pockets, um, such as the one we found. However, this solution proved unsustainable in the long run, and eventually the microorganism found its way into the habitats. The caves became their tombs. That is so sad. That is so sad. The other group instead went into exile, enforcing a planetary quarantine by utterly obliterating the surface, rendering it uninhabitable. They would henceforth live in small enclaves and dedicate themselves to preserving the lost knowledge of their civilization. Is this the curator's order? Their ultimate fate is unknown to us, but one of the data crystals indicates they were headed towards the Dandar system. All right, so we have two options. This microorganism will make a fine weapon. This will increase the effectiveness of our army. Begins remnant of a remnant event chain. Or, we can study the planet. I don't think we're reckless enough to try to weaponize this thing that caused the end of a, a galactic civilization. I think we're going to quarantine the planet. That's the smart thing to do. Situation log updated. 
I really don't think we would be stupid enough to try to weaponize <laughs> weaponize a civilization ending microorganism. That sounds very, very, very foolish. All right, let's take this construction ship. Let's move down here. We can get some of the science at least. Um, great. We have an open council position, the Minister of Defense. All right, we'll fill it up with our new commander. This science ship needs orders. Um, it looks like, well, it looks like we're out of archaeological sites. It says there began a, a remnant of a remnant event chain, event chain. Where's the Dandar system? Okay, um, that's far away. I don't think we're getting there anytime soon. So let's go ahead and let's disband the science ship. No, let's keep the science ship because it's good for researching debris whenever we need it. Um, but we'll repurpose the scientist, which is Kal Bathan, and we'll put them on a tech world to govern. We can put them on New Favaria, for example. We can put Kal Bathan. There we go. One of our leaders leveled up. This is a governor. This is the governor of the Desadia province. Okay, um, I think this is the Desadia province up here. Council so we can ready. give them crime minus 25, crime minus 10, yes. Council agenda ready, all right. Monthly unity plus 40%, fantastic. And... We can be a favored society. This is going to increase our specialist pop resource output. Blocker cleared. Okay, the science ship is without orders. That's fine. We just moved its captain away. Um, okay, so we have hyper relays here, 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 here. Um, I think it would be worth cutting over to Ubalon and then cutting down to Walton. Yes. So I think we'll build a hyper relay. A hyper relay. Research complete. A hyper relay. A hyper relay. All right. We've got a, um, a raider, a raider empire, um, contacting us, warning us to stay away. Hi, more Dwamax. What you want, foolish Dwamak? What happened to make your face look like that? Reactor accident? Vacuum exposure? Hi, look at you. We are the Obani. We hunt Dwamak. If you come to Oban, uh, Oba Turf, we make Dwama stew. Not good for you? Yes? Hi. Perhaps you know other Dwamaks. Perhaps you want them to be Dwamaks too. This can be arranged. Obani, not above fighting for Dwamaks against other Dwamaks, if price is right. Alright, we'll keep that in mind. We might be able to keep one of the empires busy by hiring them and then declaring war on the other two. I think that might be a viable research strategy. Uh, viable war strategy. Let's look into that in just a second. Um... We have all these research options. We can get another Civic. That would actually be pretty good. Um, we can take this colony ship. We can move them down to Gruner. And I think we're going to keep the name Gruner, Gruner Prime because um, we want to remember that it actually came from the Gruner. Oh, and we have a new science research as well. Um, we can get moat ha harvesting traps. I think that's our best, our best bet. Okay. So, let's go to our, our contacts log. Here's the Auburn Wildlings. We can totally keep the Mythfell Order at bay. Um, and if we keep the Order at bay, then we will be able to quickly move in against the Coalition. 
and then move down against the sender and authority. This might be a viable strategy. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's go to our contacts and let's see what it's gonna take if we contact the, what are they called again? The Alban Wildlings. Okay. Diplomacy. We know of a good raiding target. Dwamok, we hate to say no to Bash Bash, but our fleet not ready. Still recovering from last raid. Okay, well I guess we'll have to try again later. Good to know. How are we on getting cruisers? Another 67 months. Okay, it's gonna be a little while. How are our planets doing? Zero jobs on our capital. That's a-okay because we can add another administration center. How devastating would it be to our economy if we moved this from an industrial world to a forge world? Can we take this hit? Looks like not. These people need amenities, so let's build a city district and then let's make a priority of looking at our other factory worlds and increasing job availability on these worlds so we can encourage population growth and migration here. Um, I think we'll go ahead and build a city district. We should get some gene clinics on all of our worlds to increase the pop growth speed. I know we don't exactly need the habitability for lots of these worlds because we're turning them into Gaia worlds, but um, it's still good for the pop growth speed and the amenities that it provides. You know, since these three have a defensive alliance, I think best case scenario is one of them actually declaring war against us. That way they can't call on their allies in the defensive alliance. How do we provoke them into declaring war? Maybe we can insult them. All right, resources from jobs plus 5%. That's insane. Yes, please. This might be enough to actually bridge our consumer goods deficit. Pretty much, yeah. Okay, so let's see if we can provoke these people into declaring war with us. Can we insult them? Yeah, that worked well. I'm worried though <laughs> that if they declare war, they'll invite in these these two empires in as attackers. Maybe I'm playing with fire here. They do have a defensive alliance and not a military alliance though. So I wouldn't think that the other two would join in as, attack as attackers automatically. Okay, we can upgrade our planetary administration. Construction. So we're going to have a hyper relay going here and down to here. That'll connect up most of our empire, and then it might be honestly worth adding into the Tuyobos. Shashamar, Lythrin, Krant, into Sid. Uh, no, sorry, Lythrin into Sismak. Um, that way we can get to our northern border really fast. So we've connected our eastern border, our southern border, the heart of our empire, and the northern border. That'll be great. Um, this construction ship needs orders, then let's build some more hyper relays. We have the alloys to spare. Hyper relay. We're lacking the rare crystals. We need a hundred of them. Council agenda available. Okay. This shipyard can be upgraded. 
All right, Democratic ruler election. Looks like our current commissary general is going to win a re-election. Requiem for a drone. In an unexpected turn of events, a grief seems to have taken over on Zatar too. We are witnessing an unprecedented halt in the work of an entire hive in the aftermath of the death of a singular drone. We are unsure why this drone is different from the others, but the hive seems to be holding some kind of ceremony where the drone is almost religiously cut into pieces before those pieces are taken to various nurseries for newborn drones. Moments later, the entire hive springs into motion again. This is highly confusing and looks a lot like an event of social and spiritual importance. Maybe not all drones are created equal, and this was some kind of leader drone, given more agency than the rest. How are we doing on starbase capacity? I think we could build... We have a starbase right here. We might as well upgrade them and continue building anchorages there. Um, it would also be worth building here... This is the homeworld of Desadia, which is our forge world. It'd be worth building a transit hub. Okay. Space station, space station, space station. We can go ahead and kit this out with some more shipyards. So we're going to have a southern shipyard, we're going to have an eastern shipyard, and I think we'll have a northern shipyard somewhere around here. Right now we're kind of using Fevnor for that, um, like as a temporary, but we'll get a full, a fully dedicated shipyard. Yamathur, we can go ahead and we can build more anchorages, and in terms of buildings, we can build a transit hub, um, an interstellar recruitment office. This will give us Empire Modifier, external leader pool size, leader experience gain plus 10%. Increase the chance for renowned leaders to contact us. This sounds like a great building to build on our capital, our capital world's space station. New Favaria, we can upgrade the planetary administration. It's always these consumer goods. Um, we're gonna be having consumer goods struggles all throughout this playthrough, I can already predict. All right, how's our world on Gruner doing? Is it still developing? Yes. Once it's finished developing, we will go ahead and take the decision to uh, terraform it to a Gaia world. It's Forge world, we can upgrade the planetary administration. We can build another building on here. Looks like we need amenities. So we're gonna go ahead and build a hollow theater. How are we doing on amenities for our other planets? Okay, okay, okay. Decent. All right, here we can build our gene clinics after the city district. That'll give us some amenities. As a factory world, we might want to also build civilian industries. All right. Construction complete. Now, how come only some of our systems are showing this little icon for having a hyper relay, but not all of them? All right, our head of research has reached veteran level. Um, so we can go ahead and give them counselor effect research speed plus 5% would probably be the best as the the counselor who's kind of leading all the research in our empire. Yeah, research speed plus 5%. Upkeep from jobs minus 5%. Now this is gonna help a lot with our consumer goods. I imagine. Okay, well, maybe a lot was an exaggeration. It helped a little. 
the more our empire grows, the more valuable that perk will become. Construction. Insult from the sender and authority. Come and attack us. Please, just don't invite your friends. Colony established. How are we doing on naval capacity? We might actually consider just building a second fleet. Um, yes, we'll join the galactic community. Um, I don't think we want to be entirely removed from the world. We are receiving transmission from... Okay, so we have hegemonic imperialists. Okay. We have... Xenophile, fanatic spiritualists. I'm not reading all of these because there's going to be a million of them. We're playing on a huge galaxy and you can just see how many empires there are. Okay, we have authoritarian, xenophile, spiritualist. We have xenophile, militarist, spiritualist. All right. Check out this galaxy. We finally have met almost every every empire in the galaxy, and it looks like a right mess. We have yet to see who the um, the big power powerful empires are going to be here. Okay, so form the galactic market. We will support this. The readied shield, diplomatic weight from fleet power plus twenty percent, naval capacity plus ten percent, um, ship upkeep plus five percent. I think as a general rule, unless something really serves our interests, we're going to try to veto most international regu uh, regulations. Because um, like I said, our, our isolationist means we just kind of, we don't really believe in this kind of galactic government. We're taking part in it because we don't want to be left out, but... Um, so... For all of these, we're going to oppose, unless we feel really strongly about something. Okay. Incoming transmission. Looks like recycling initiatives. Complete. They have no business telling us what to do with our um, with our recycling. All right, we have moat harvesting traps. We can get artisan output plus 10%. We really need that right now, so let's take it. All right, the Alliance has declared rivalry with the Coalition. They're good friends. You know what? Maybe we could... Maybe we could declare a rivalry with them. Construction complete. To really solidify this friendship. Alright, Alliance. Federation Association offer. The Alliance of Hardshell Harbor is offering the Molinic centralized um, a spot in their Federation. Why this matters to me, I do not know. I can't actually get any better relationships with them complete. specifically because they're part of a federation. Migration treaty proposal. Time out was auto declined. Yeah, we don't want a, mar a migration treaty with them anyways. I didn't, I missed that. We have a million of these. We have a million of these offers here. All right. Administrative insight. Charter of workers' rights. You know what? This is one of the few that we actually believe in. As an egalitarian, um, as an egalitarian faction, we do believe in workers' rights. Regulated growth. Oppose. Exploitation Act. Okay, pre-FTLs. This is something we actually really care about. No, we oppose this, but we do support the Non-Interference Act. Equal standing. 
Um, no. We believe in non-interference. Guardian angels. Diplomatic weight. No. Oppose. Okay. Cooperative research channels. Oppose. Again, I'm not trying to min-max our, like, the perks we receive here. Um, I'm just trying to do what feels right for roleplay. Um, for an isolationist empire that doesn't really want galactic government to be, you know, determining what we can and can't do. Alright, let's go ahead and let's look at Gruner Prime. We're going to go ahead and take a planetary decision to turn this into a Gaia world. And then after that, we're going to head, go ahead and build our monument, if I can find it in this list. Incoming transmission from New Baldrock. Oh, hi. We haven't talked to you guys in a little while. This is General Palthanok, military governor of New Baldrock. I wish to address undersubstantiated reports. Oh, sorry. Address unsubstantiated reports claiming there has been a resurgence in rebel activity on this world. Let me tell you now that nothing could be further from the truth. The planet has been fully pacified and all, subs all subversive terrorist elements have been fully rooted out. Its citizens are once again productive members of the greater Dothnok nation. Huh. Why would he feel the need to clarify? Clarify that if there w really wasn't any... Hmm. Research complete. Suspicious. Recent advancements in our ship designs have led to an insight in how to upgrade our flagship to make use of previously underused system. All right. Situation log updated. We've got cruisers. We can get alloy mega forges. That's going to be really good. Plasma thrusters. That's going to be really good. Um, civilian repli complexes. That's going to be really good. Crystal infused plating. That's going to be really good. Okay, we have a bunch of great decisions. I don't think I'm going to take flat cannons. Eh. Let's go plasma thrusters. Let's go plasma thrusters for sure. Okay, um, and then let's look at our fleet situation. I think it's time. I think it's time to... I think it's time to consider... Um having a secondary fleet. So this construction ship is going to go up here and then it's going to upgrade the flagship. Um, and then for the time being, if we go into fleet management, I think we're going to add a new fleet and I think we're going to remove the frigates in here. It won't let us disband the frigates from this screen. The reason why I want to dis, uh, disband the frigates is, um, where's the split transfer ships? Transfer the frigate class frigates out, and then let's disband them. The reason why I wanted to do this was because I prefer to put my uh, torpedo technology onto my cruisers. And so that's going to give us more space. Um, it's going to give us more space. We have 20 extra command limit to add in some cruisers. So let's go ahead and let's add ship. And we're going to add cruisers. But first we need to design the cruisers. Um, I actually think that uh, this episode is reaching a good stopping point. I think before we design this, the cruisers, we'll probably go ahead and end out this episode. Um, we're going to build two, two fleets. Right? So we're going to have our MSI warship that we're going to upgrade. We're going to have one fleet and two fleet. And then I think we might actually be able to consider a three front war. Once we have two fleets plus our MSI warship. Uh, we're going to make use of the Alban Wildlings to raid against the Mythfell Order. Um, and all should go well. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. And please stay tuned for the next time. Um, I know this has been a slow bird bur uh, building up for this uh, this war, but we will get there. We will get there. <laughs>